Okay, welcome back. So in our last video, we successfully deployed Strapi using render. So that's what we have right here. This is the deployed version here, and we used render to do this. Uh, now we discovered there was an issue. And if you look here, the post content type is here, but it's empty. There are no entries in our deployed version. If you go back to our uh, local development server, you see that if we go to post, we have lots of posts, we have lots of authors, but the deployed version has no entries. It's all empty. And the reason why is because we are using a SQLite database for our local development server, and that database was not transferred up when we deployed uh, Strapi on render. So there's basically an empty database here. There's no entries. How can we solve this problem? Well, it turns out that Strapi has a way to transfer data from our local development server up to our remote instance. The way we're going to do this is to use the built-in data transfer feature that Strapi has. You can check out the documentation here. It talks all about it. And it's actually not too difficult to do. So let's do it right now. On the uh, deployed remote instance, you're going to go to uh, settings. And in settings, you're going to go to transfer tokens and you're going to create a new transfer token. You can call it anything you want. You're going to choose a token duration and a token type. We're going to use push. Push means we're going to push data from our local development Strapi instance and push it up to the remote instance. So that's why we're choosing push. And when we save this, you see that it generates the uh, token information right here. Okay, now if you go back to the documentation, you're going to find a command line here. And this is what we're actually going to use to uh, do the transfer. It's going to be npm run strappy transfer dash 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 two and then the destination URL. So let's go to our terminal and make sure you're in the back end folder here. You're going to paste in that command. Now we need the destination URL and that we're going to get from our uh, admin panel here. You're just going to copy the URL for the deployed uh, strappy server, including the admin. Paste that in over here and press enter. Okay, so now it's asking for the transfer token. That's what we just generated right here. So I'll copy that and paste it by right clicking. And now it's uh, giving us a little warning, making sure we want to go and proceed because it will delete any data on the remote instance. But that's fine because there's currently no data there. And it looks like that's been completed successfully. So we can see it gives us a little bit of a summary of what was transferred over. And if we take a look back over here and go to our content manager, look at that. All of the content, all of the entries pops up, all of our categories and authors, all of our posts are all right here. So actually it looks like the data transfer was successful. In fact, we could even test it if we wanted to. We could go to the uh, API endpoint and uh, yeah, post, let's test that. Look at that, it is working. So we're getting all of the posts when we go query the API endpoint here for our deployed remote Strapi server. So it looks like we have successfully solved the problem by pushing all of our data from the local development up to the remote server. However, it turns out there is actually a little bit of a problem here. and It's not apparent right away. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this running. I'm not going to do anything. I'll walk away from the computer and I'm going to come back in about 15 or 20 minutes and we'll see what happens. Okay, so it's been about 20 minutes and I'm going to refresh this page right now. As you can see, with this spinner, spinning wheel right here, this page is not refreshing. It is hanging. Now, why is this? Why won't the page refresh? Well, if you recall, render gives us this uh, warning message up here that because we're using a free instance, it will spin down with inactivity, which will delay requests by about a minute. So what happens is if 
your server isn't being used, after about 15 minutes, render shuts it down because you're using the, the free tier. And to start it back up again takes about a minute. And so that's what's happening right now. The server is being restarted, and so we just have to wait. Okay, and we are back. And you can see we're being prompted to enter our credentials once again here to recreate everything. That's a little bit of a warning sign because we've already done this. But I'll do it again and we'll log in. Okay, so we're back in and we want to check to make sure that our content is still here and it's not, right? What happened here? All of our posts and authors, they're all missing. We just uploaded all of this data from our development server up to this deployed server, and now it's gone. Well, what happened is that this is another consequence of using the free tier. So we know that using a free instance will means that it shuts down after, um, after about 15 minutes. And if you remember, when we went to create a new web service, let me just simulate this really quickly for you. If you go down here and select free, it's going to warn you about that spinning down after a a little bit of time, but also it does not support persistent disks. This is the key point here, right? So if we're using the free tier, then when it shuts down after 15 minutes, the SQLite database that was stored on disk gets deleted. We lose it. And so now all of our information, all of our content is lost. This is a big issue that we need to fix because we need Strapi to remember our data, right? We need persistence. How can we solve this? Well, one option would be to pay money, right? So if we went for the $7 a month option, then we would get support for persistent disks and we could continue to use a SQLite database. It would persist on disk over time. So that's one solution. Uh, if you were to do this, you could also drop Cloudinary if you wanted to and just store your images in Strapi on disk here. But we used Cloudinary for a reason because it's a really good uh, hosting provider for images and we can sort of follow that same strategy here to keep things free we can use a database provider instead of just storing things on a sqlite database locally on disk so actually uh render has an option here for a postgres database and there is a free tier here so that's one thing you could go for but if you notice, a free database expires uh, 90 days after creation. So this database will only be free for the first 90 days. So while this is sort of free, it's not a full solution as far as what I want to give you in this tutorial. I want to provide for you a fully free solution for hosting a strappy Gatsby uh, static blog type project. So we're not going to go with render here. Instead, we're going to be using Neon. So Neon here offers a free tier. So go ahead, create an account and log in. Okay, once you've logged in, you can now create your project. We'll just give it a name and choose a region and create project. Okay, just like that, we have a database that's ready to go for us. Uh, next, we have to actually install the plugins so that we can get everything working. However, before installing that plugin, what I want to do is I want to go back to our code here and I want to create a branch of our repo. So we're going to create a new branch. I'll just call it um, database migration. And this is going to help us make all of our installations and not worry about messing up our main branch. So we've got this branch and the first thing we want to do is look for our plugin over here. So we're going to go to the marketplace and search for Neon. And we see that there is here a Neon plugin for Strapi that we can use. So this is going to give us the command to install the Neon plugin right here. And actually, you know, before we do this, before I forget, since we're going to be now moving to a Postgres database, what we have to do is install PG. This is going to allow Strapi to interface with a Postgres database. So let's do this first. We'll install PG. Good. And then we're going to copy this plugin installation command right here. This is going to install the Strapi Neon Tech database branches. Perfect. Okay. Now that that has been installed, 
we're going to configure this. Now, there are two different ways to configure this program. Uh, sorry, this plugin. One way is via environment variables, and the other way is using your plugin.js config file. So if you remember, when we installed our Cloudinary plugin, we had to add things to our plugins.js file. So that is one way you could do this. You could add in all this information. I prefer going the environment variable route, so I'm not gonna do it with uh, the plugins.js. Instead, I'll open up the uh, Dion, uh, .env file and add a neon section here. So there are four environment variables that we're gonna need. The first is our API key right here. Uh, the next is going to be our project name. And then we have the role. And git branch. Okay, so let's copy all of these over. And now let's get the variables that we need to, uh, uh, the values for these variables. So for the API key, there is a link here that you can click on and it will tell you where to get this. So we can generate a new API key here, call it a name. Uh, database migration works and here it is here's the value here that we need so let's copy and paste that now for the project name uh, we named our project here strappy block right so let's just type that in uh, for our role our role you can see is down here and I believe this is sort of like the different users that can log into this and so it's also written down here in the connection string. So I will just copy and paste that. It's probably gonna be like uh, similar to your email address. And finally for git branch, we'll just use main. Uh, git branch here refers to an interesting feature that Neon has. Uh, if you look at the plugins here, it talks a little bit about this, but the idea is that uh, Neon, can, you can create branches of your database, similar to how you can create branches of your code base when you're using GitHub. You can have different branches like a development uh, environment. You can do that also for your database. So you can have a copy of your main database just for your development environment. So by changing the value here for your git branch you can sort of access these different branches we're not going to worry about this feature but it's just worth mentioning it's an interesting feature that uh, could be very useful for you uh, okay so now once all of these are saved i believe that's that's everything right yeah that's the entire setup process so to test this out let's run our development server Okay, it took a little bit of time to get that all up and running, but here we are on localhost now, and it's asking us to create our credentials again. So I'm gonna do that. And we'll log in here. We are in, and let's see what we have. So we have all of our collection types, but everything is empty. Now, actually, this is what we should expect. This is because we have switched to now a new database and this new database here is empty, okay? Let's see if we can find any information about this. We'll go to our tables. And while we don't have any entries here, we see that there is an authors table, there is a categories table, there is a posts table, right? We've got all the links in all of this. So the schema for all of our files has now been updated correctly on our Neon database. Even though there's no entries, it looks like things are in fact running correctly. So this is great news. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to have this database connected to our deployed remote Strapi instance. Right now it's working with our local development server, which is great, but we need it to work with our remote instance. So to do that, there's a few ways you can do it. The way I'm going to do it is, seems a little bit strange at first, but you'll see why in just a second. So what I wanna do is I want to go here, I'm going to, uh, okay, so we're gonna commit this. We installed the Neon plugin. We'll commit that, and then we're going to publish the branch. Okay, so our database migrations branch is now going to be published. And do not create a pull request yet. Okay, we're going to keep this as a separate branch for now. Now when we go back to our um, render in the back here, we can go into settings. And we're going to be able to scroll down, and we can choose a different branch to deploy. So we're gonna edit this and we're going to choose the database migration branch. Okay, so let's save that. 
And as we do that, it's going to start deploying. However, this deployment is going to fail because we need the new environment variables. So let's go add those right here. We have these four environment variables and let's add them here and save them again. Okay, now it's going to start a new deploy for the new environment variables using the database migration branch. So let's give this uh, just a few minutes to get up and running and then we'll be back soon. Okay, it took a little bit of time, but we have successfully deployed the database migration branch here. So we can go onto our link, go to admin, and looks like it is retaining the credentials I created that were stored in the Postgres database. So this is a good sign. Now, we still expect everything to be empty because in our development server over here, everything is empty, right? So that makes sense. But the fact that it was accepting my existing credentials, that's a very good sign. What we have to do now is we have to fill this up with our content. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna close down the development server here. And we're actually gonna be using the data transfer token to do this again, just like we did before. If we go to our um, development server, we'll shut that down. And what we can do now is be smart. And the database migration branch here is using uh, this Neon database, right? It's not using the SQLite database. But if we go back to our main branch, our main branch did not install the Postgres plugin. It did not install the Neon plugin. And so it is still connected to our SQLite database right here. And so if we now push the data from our main branch up to our deployed uh, server here, which is running on the database migration branch, then we should be able to fill the Postgres database up with all of our content. So that's what we're going to do. So inside of our deployed instance over here, we'll go back to settings and transfer tokens. We'll create a new one. Uh, we can call this whatever we want. And this is a push token. We will create that and here we go. Okay, so we get our token here. Uh, let's go back to our data transfer command. Here it is. So here we are in our backend folder using our main branch that's connected to the SQLite database. We'll paste in this and then we need, we need the URL here, including the uh, forward slash admin and I am missing a space. There we go. Okay, let's connect there. And it's asking for our transfer token. Here it is. And yes, we agree to overwrite the data. Great, let's let this go. Okay, that has been finished. And if we go back here now to our deployed instance and we go back to our content manager, we will see that now we have all of our content back where it belongs. We have all of our posts right here. All of the entries are there. And if we check in our Neon count, uh, console over here, let's just do a quick refresh, go to our tables. And if we go to our authors, we actually see our authors are here in our remote Postgres database categories and posts, including all of the content right here. So actually it's worked. Our content is now in a Postgres database that is persistent. It will not be deleted when our strappy instance goes to sleep. Okay, so this is brilliant. This is what we needed. Now, if you wanted your remote instance to be deployed from your main branch, you could certainly do that. All you would really have to do is uh, go and do a pull request from your database migration branch and merge all of the new plugin information for the Neon database back into the main branch. And then you could just go back into renders dashboard here and again, change the settings to deploy from your main branch. And, uh, and then you could re redeploy it, it would work and you would be working from your main branch and your main branch would be connected to your Neon database right here. And this now fully solves our 
need to have a persistent database connected to our strappy backend here, even though we are using only the free tier for render. Hope this helps, and I'll see you in our next video where we connect our Gatsby front end up to this newly deployed uh, render backend.